Welcome to Knowledge Graphs, Week 1 Knowledge Representation with Graphs, Hands on 1.2 NLP. My name is Anton and I will be guiding through uh, you through this first Python notebook for Week 1. So, but first things first, please do not edit this file. Please make a copy in your own Google Drive. And for the rest of this hands-on session, we will be using files uploaded into our Google Drive folder. You can click this link here and make a copy of this folder. So today, uh, before anything else, I would like to show you how we can upload files to this notebook. There are two ways to do that. One is to upload the file from a local machine, like so. Okay, now we have uploaded our Star Trek JSON file. Or you can also upload the file uh, from your Google Drive to this notebook. I will not go through this because it will show you my Gmail account, but you should allow Google to have access to your drive for this portion. So, if you recall in section 1.3, The Art of Understanding, the process of understanding relies on the correct interpretation of various um, aspects of natural language, which includes syntax, semantics, context, pragmatics, and experience. For this notebook, we will talk about syntax and semantics. And we will use a widely used Python library called Spacey. So to continue, the doc object is actually composed of several pipelines, which corresponds to the syntactic and semantic analysis of natural language processing. Now, let's look at the token object in detail. The token object contains several linguistic annotations, such as the lemma, the part of speech tag, a much more detailed part of speech tag according to the pen, tree bank, and the dependency graph. So lemmatization falls under the umbrella of morphological analysis. In this way, words that have different inflections can be treated as the same item. For example, the auxiliary verbs is, are, was, were, are grouped together under the lemma B. For the part of speech tagging, as well as the detailed part of speech tagging, these are uh, the syntactic analysis in natural language processing. So let's look at the token object here. And then let's print out the first 25 tokens and their attributes in tabular form. So here we can see Leonard, Simon, Nimoy. These three tokens have part of speech tag to proper noun. And then um, detailed part of speech tag is singular proper noun. And the dependency tag for the first two tokens, Leonard and Simon, these are considered compound as they are part of a group of proper noun tokens. And here, on the fourth token with ID 3, we can see that the lemma of was is B, as already explained, and the POS tag is auxiliary, and the dependency tag is auxiliary passive. Okay, so we can also display the dependency parsing in a better way, so we don't always have to look at tables. So luckily for us, Spacey also provides a sub-library for visualization. So here we can see the dependency of the phrases in the first sentence. And note that each relationship is indicated by an arrow, where the head or the tail of the arrow is modified by its dependent or the tip of the arrow. In the diagram below, born is considered the head, 
was as the tail, and ox pass is for passive auxiliary. So there you go. We just a call for the NLP method from Spacey. We were able to analyze our text morphologically and syntactically. Now let's go to named entity recognition. Named entity recognition is part of semantic analysis. And recall from section 1.4, graphs and triples, that graphs are constructed from several triples, where each triple is composed of two vertices connected with a directed edge. The vertices here are the entities, while the edges are the relationships that exist between these entities. So named entity recognition or NER involves locating and classifying these real-world objects mentioned in the text into categories such as names, persons, organizations, locations, expressions of time, and so on. So the spacey doc object, other than having linguistic annotations, it also gives you the named entities and stores them in the ends property with the following attributes. You can retrieve the text or the surface form of the named entity, as well as the starting and the ending character positions of this entity. And lastly, the category, which is stored in the label attribute. So let's retrieve the named entities from our three sentences. And now let's use pandas as opposed to using tabulate, so we can show these entities. So here we can see that the first entity found by Spacey is Leonard Simon Nimoy, which starts from the first character of the sentence and ends on the 20th character. And the category of Leonard Simon Nimoy is person. And let's go down here. We have other categories such as date, for instance, or NORP. Now, if you don't know what NORP means, Spacey also provides another way of checking what this category is. So we just call Spacey that explain NORP and it will tell you that NORP stands for nationalities or religious or political groups. However, notice that uh, the named entity recognizer of the language model that we selected is not very specific or not very accurate. For example, Star Trek is not exactly an organization here. So I guess we would have to use a more appropriate language model for our domain here. Oh, and let me show you another nice way of visualizing the named entity recognizer here. So here, instead of looking at it, using pandas data frame, we can just use this placey and it shows you or it annotates the text for you with different colors depending on the categories. Okay, so in summary, syntactic analysis and parts of semantic analysis is often straightforward. However, the same cannot be said for semantics. I mean, looking at the text, it's easy to say which of which tokens refer to names. But of course, we know that with semantics, there are always ambiguities. And the succeeding notebook will discuss this. So thank you for your attention. And I hope you were able to learn something from this notebook.